I think it's a little bit more taboo in this town, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get everybody to come out and talk about it a little bit more. Um, I, I mean, I don't know. I guess, you know, some people think you're a freak if you think there's a ghost in your house, you've got a mental disease. We're here to say that you don't. Well, I mean, I guess it's possible. It's possible. <laughs> I'm not a doctor. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, so that's, that's, that's our mission. We, people call us up because they want our help. We don't go out to cemeteries. We don't go to the abandoned house down the road to find ghosts. What we do is we try to just help people. Um, people call it, I, I kind of liken it to like being an exterminator. Somebody, you know, hears something in their house, they, they call us up, we go, and uh, we see what we can find. If we do, I mean, we go in there with a the mindset that it's not haunted. We go in there thinking it's the creaky door you're hearing is a window open. Um, it could be an animal in the attic, a squirrel, something like that. We go in there with that mentality, and if we can't debunk that, then that's when we turn kind of the paranormal. Like, we never come out flat out and say, yeah, there's a ghost in your house, unless we get boom right on the camera. You know, hi, I'm Aunt Sally. <laughs> Hasn't happened yet. Um, but, and I think that goes well for our team because, you know, we don't, I don't want to say we're not jumpy, because we're jumpy if we see anything. But we definitely go in there with that mindset that, you know, we're going to get to the bottom of the issue. And if it goes beyond that, where there is a problem, um, if we do find something, then that's that's when we go to the homeowner and they say, look, you know, I want to, I want I want to get rid of this ghost. That's something we don't do, but we have people that can do that for them. Mm -hmm. Which through cleansing, um, bringing a priest in the house, you know, whatever they whatever a client wants, we're gonna do it for them. So and everything we do is free. So this is our own time we put into it. Obviously, we love doing it. Our wives don't appreciate it sometimes. <laughs> but um, we've been doing it long enough now. We're, we're really finding enough. I don't want to say we're getting answers, but we're getting enough proof to make us keep going to strive to find whatever is, that, you know, whatever is out there. Um, now, I don't know if anybody's heard of it, but we did um, just do a documentary. Um, it's, it is a house in Messina here, and we did a house in Tupper Lake. And the one we did in Tupper Lake, we actually had Brian Harnawa from Ghost Hunters. He came, he came down for, for this to help us out. And it was quite an experience to work with him, you know, being that we were on the couch watching them years ago, thinking, man, this is so cool what they do. And then to have him come up here and work with them was, you know, a really cool experience for us. But on the same side of that, we found out that we don't do anything different than he does. So what you see on TV is glorified. Um, what we do is definitely not what you see on TV. It's uh, the uh, three quarters of the equipment that they use on TV. They don't even use. It's there for for face value, you know, make it look like it's something cool. But as long as you got a recorder, um, a camera, you don't even need this little setup. Just a night vision camera. That's all you really need. Because when it comes down to it, that's where you get your most evidence. Now, like these tools here, like the K2 meter. I don't know. I mean, we use it. And we've had some good luck with it, but at the same time, it'll pick up, you know, any frequency. And Nate, Nate's going to actually go over this a little bit with you guys. But um, is there any questions uh, off the bat here before we get started? <coughs> no. We are going to show a clip of the uh, of the movie. Um, how old are you guys? Seventeen. Seventeen. All right. I don't think there's going to be any swearing in it. I... No, we just read the exaggerated. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, the DVD does have a little bit of swearing in it. Carl can go for that. The swearing is uh, a lot done by Brian. Um, some was done by me. But the thing is, it's, it's, it shows realness. You know, um, we were actually scared. Well, I don't want to say, well, hey, we were scared. Yeah, we were scared a couple scared. times. We weren't sure what we were getting into. And, uh, um, you know, you kind of see it there. But that's the thing. When, when we feel something, we just come out and say it. You know, it's... Uh, we don't try to sugarcoat anything. Now, can right. we buy the DVDs online? or? Yeah. You can buy it online. Did, did you guys bring any? Yeah. We do have them here tonight, if anybody wants to buy them. Mm -hmm. um, they're $15. You get them online for 18 because it has cover shipping. So, But all the money that we get from that goes right back to slaps. Um, covers gas money, new equipment, things like that. So, obviously not getting rich off it. Um, now we also I also did put in there that we are looking for is anybody in here looking to be part of the group? You guys there? Mm -hmm. Okay, because what we are looking for um, most definitely is a caseworker. Now uh, what that entails it's pretty 
detailed. Um, we need somebody to do the pre-interview over the phone with the client uh, and pretty much do a write-out of how, you know, the claims, what went on in the investigation, and then the aftermath of anything we may have found. Uh, it, you know, it's... It's time. It's very time consuming. Nate and I do a lot of it now, but we're just not good with organization. I mean, if you could see, I mean, as of coming in today, I mean, it's just, everything just kind of boom. So we tried to we tried to take too much on our plate. So definitely need a caseworker um, and investigators. If anybody's interested in that, um, we do have a Franklin County kind of team where if we have because all of our calls are in Franklin County, Copper Lake, um, just out that way, Shattagay. So, um, if, but if anybody, you know, is interested in Messina, when we have a Messina case, and, because there's basically, what you see here is, is this is our team, uh, with the exception of one more person. And a lot of times, it's Nate and I that can go, Todd can go, but he's, you know, he's also from Malone. So, if we have a local case, which we do have, right now we've got about 10 or 11 cases lined up. So, if anybody is interested, we'll take your name, we'll see you after, and um, we'll get some contacts, and, you know, we'll do a little... Yes. How often do you do this? How, how many hours, you know? Um, how many hours do we put into it? Yeah. Like, well, say, per week or... Well, it, it depends on the case. Now, lately, we've been just... We've been booked. Um, generally, on, on a normal case, we'll say we go four hours. Okay? That means you've got four cameras. We've got four audios. We've got the... Well, we've got, you got two other cameras. Yeah, we've got uh, wireless, wireless, digital, just regular digital, you know, uh, infrared cameras. Um, sorry, I have to put that out. So basically, just in that, there's 36 hours worth of going over the evidence. So rather than reading a book or watching that network television show, <laughs> we really end up going over yeah. hours of evidence. So, and that's kind of what we're looking for, too, because we've gone through many, many, many members throughout the years. Uh, because they watch Ghost Hunters and they think it's what you see on Ghost Hunters. And it's no, not. It's not. It is no. absolutely not. I mean, everybody wants to do the hunt. Yeah, everybody wants to do the hunt because they, they want to get the scare. They want to get the big scare. But then you tell them, no, you, you want to sit down. And then you see the feet tapping and then they're into the thing 10 minutes and they, they look like right. they want to go, oh, this is crazy. It's yeah. definitely a patience thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. You've got to be very patient because that one second that you get impatient and just want to fast forward. You might have just skipped the best evidence of the whole right. investigation. Right. And sometimes, you know, we'll go over all the evidence and it'll feel like, you know, what was it for? Well, when we don't find something, it was for something. It was to tell them, you know what, guess what? Right. You don't have anything going on. It was natural. It was just something, and it puts them at ease. There is something. Well, that's kind of like playing golf, and it's that one that brings you back. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, and too, you know, you go into a house for four hours, and you just know nothing happened. And, you know, you've got to go over the evidence. And the thing about that, too, is, you know, the FBI doesn't solve a murder in a day. So we have to we, we have to go back. If they say that, you know, it continues, we go back. You know, sometimes we go back three or four times, you know, and none of the times do we find anything. But that's our job. You know, we're, we're to put the, you know, give them peace of mind and, you know, that's just what we have to do, you know. Sometimes it's, it's not it's not glorified. It's um, it's a lot of time. But, like Nate said, that one time you find something, it makes everything worth it. Now, I'll go over a little bit. I mean, he kind of went into <laughs> some of the equipment. Obviously, he went over the DVR system. They're just infrared cameras. Anything that you'll see at, like, a, a store or a convenience store, it's just surveillance. We have yet to really catch anything on. But it, it what it solidifies for us is where was everybody? You know, when we found something on the recorder, was there someone there talking, or was it really something that was paranormal? So this is what we fall back on as more of a, a security thing, trying to make sure that we account for everything. Um, but of course, we have the the portable ones to catch any. Yeah, I don't think we've got many anomalies. Not many. Video anomalies. Well, we got we got a couple of anomalies, but. Um, I guess our bread and butter would be the digital recorder. Yeah. And you catch EVPs on these yeah. uh, electronic voice phenomenons. Um, they're voices that, that captured on either hard drive or tape, but 
we just happen to have digital that aren't ours. They 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 are something that we can't explain. Um, we've gotten a few off show in a minute. Then there's a the K2. You went over the K2. Kind of yeah. It just gauges uh, electromagnetic field disturbances, but you'll find that most things in your home have electromagnetic. Do you remember the term you ever uh, been raised near power lines? Because apparently those aren't good for you. So don't. So basically, you're not supposed to sit in front of the TV that close. Yeah. Um, but most items in your home will have, you know, these things. So that's why we do do it at night, and we shut everything off, and we stay away from them. If this is going off, and there's nothing around that could be causing it, but cell phones cause it, so we make sure that we know our cell phones on. Then maybe it's something, but it's just something to support our other findings. Yeah, that there you don't. You don't go to the homeowner and say, hey, I found a ghost. Yeah, we had a blip, so you're yeah. haunted. We, you we you kind of use that. That's more personal experience. Um, it's in the DVD, too, in the Messina house especially. That that always works for us, and it you know, answers us. And by answering, you know, we put a little quarter in there, and if somebody's here, you know, just light that up for us, and it'll, it'll light up. But it won't do it any other time until we ask it to. The um, gate, I mean, when it comes on there, the gauge, this is a high reading. That means, you know, it shouldn't. That's, that's more of a natural cause from the electronics. But it, sometimes we can get responses with just one little blip. And, you know, it might be something for us. Mm -hmm. This is new technology. Oops, breaking the old technology. This is called uh, a wide spectrum, well, they call it a full spectrum camera. It records in infrared, like these, but also ultraviolet. This light here, I won't really, because it'll kind of hurt your eyes. Obviously, you can't see this light, but you can see the ultralight. But we don't see an ultralight. It's kind of like a, the best way I can explain it is a butterfly has a pattern on its back. But if you view it under an ultralight, ultraviolet light lens, you'll see more patterns that we don't see with our eyes. So that there's a spectrum of light, it's this big, we can see in this view. We're wondering if maybe there's something in another realm that we can't see. And there have been some evidence online, I've seen people capture things. Uh, so far, I haven't caught much on it, but we're still working with it. We've, it's new to us. Uh, we've had it for maybe four months. Um, any questions so far? Um, that should be, and then everything else, our best tool is us. I mean, that's not to be egotistical or anything, but personal experience, writing down everything, finding, you know, any disturbances, getting those weird feelings. He's had, he's notorious for feelings of dread, and I'm notorious for my hair standing on end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it doesn't happen often. I mean, one of the cases we're going to show you here in Chattagay, um, and we, we were, I think, two years into it, so it was our, this is our best house that we've ever gotten. And I just got into the room without really knowing the claims all that well, and I just got really nauseous. I mean, to the point where I was getting dizzy, I was sweating, I, mean, I thought I was having a heart attack. <laughs> I got out of the room and I was absolutely fine. But come to find out, we got some pretty good EVPs in that room too. So you put that, you know, to to, to the average person, that's not going to mean much. But to us, giving it to the homeowner, you know, it's I, I think pretty good, pretty good evidence. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm going to show some of that right now. If you know, I'll take this out of the way. Um, you want to try again? Can everyone see? It's mostly a hearing thing, really. Anyways. So. Okay, this first one is uh, from Chattagay, and as it's so titled, Hey, that's what we heard on the record. Um, and we know it wasn't one of us, it just happens to be something. Right. <coughs> up until listening afterwards yeah this yeah we did not hear that basically we'll go over the recorders with headphones right and sometimes you'll hear sometimes you'll hear a little something but then you gotta sit there and play it over and over and, and then i take it and i put it in the computer and i try to enhance it a little bit better so i can hear and you'll find that most most evps are are in the distance of something uh, of the i guess what do you call it the 
the wavelength of the sound. So, like, you'll see, you'll hear a lot of times that us talking is very loud because I had to amplify it because there's some voice there in the background that we didn't hear when we were sit sitting there. Right. That that goes to that goes to say about doing doing these at night, or, or I'm sorry, at night outside or even in the day. Outside doesn't work because the recorders will pick up so much sound outside because sound carries. I mean, you can pick up. You can literally pick up something a mile away on this, and it could be it could be misinterpreted as maybe a moan or you know, it's a dog barking a mile away, and you hear. Yeah, because oh, it doesn't sound the same as that at that particular time <coughs> than when you go back. Because you you always think, well, that was just a dog barking. I don't need to mark that. You hear it back, you're like, oh my god. So when you're in a house, you got walls, you're contained. It's a little bit more controlled as we can hear it. Okay, here's here's another one. So that's one where it was, I believe that was in the, the one bedroom. That was in the bathroom, actually. Mm -hmm. Oh, was it in the bathroom? Yeah, we had all gone outside for a break. I think that was after I felt that dread feeling. We were all outside and, uh, what was this one? That was Unknown. This is the one we always, we, we, get, we titled it Unknown because none of us really know what it says. We all have our own theories, but I'll go ahead and play that. Need to make it a little louder so we so we can hear you. Need to make it a little louder so, I, so we can hear you. Now, I'll give you a little background on this one. This is this is the room that I was just talking about. Um, it was me and another guy, me and a camera guy, in this room, and. Um, I mean, the claim was a little four-year-old saying that a man named Felix is coming in and out of her closet playing with her toys, and it was scaring her at first, and then it said, you can come in and play with me. Then when uh, the dad called me, uh, Felix supposedly told the girl, you're no longer welcome in this room. So, and being four years old, I mean, I've got a four-year-old, that's just, you know, when you hear that. So anyway, so we're in here acting all tough, and we had told it to, you know, if you're here, you know, we're adults, come and scare us. And, we, and right here, we hear, like, uh, the toys moving. And then you can hear me talking. I actually have a skip in my voice because I'm a little freaked out. I'm like, oh, boy. <laughs> so we hear that, and then I said, you need to make it a little louder. And then in the closet where this guy is supposedly coming in and out, I actually heard that out loud. We didn't have to go back to the recorder. It was that, And that's the first and only time that we've ever had that happen. What it says, I don't know. I, I think it says, what's the matter with playing with toys? We asked, you know, why do you come out yeah, and mess with a little girl? Yeah, that's what I heard. It, I mean, it could be anything. I can tell you what it says, and you're going to hear it, and you're going, oh, yeah. That's no, exactly I was saying it that to him before you said but it. Yeah, that, that was, that was probably one of, the, one of the best ones we've ever got. We See, still don't know what it says. When I heard it, and you, and you can tell if I, if I describe, it sounds to me like someone moving a windbreaker, like getting up. And <laughs> that, that right there would be voice matrixing. But... We had these to solidify that no one even moved or wore a windbreaker that Yeah, Nate, Nate's perfect at when you bring him something and you're like, this, I got this. He's like, ah, it's probably this. And you're going, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> He's, yeah, he just did that to me the other day. He goes, I didn't I realize where, the, where I was picking up the EVP when we picked it up. I mean, there's some in there. I mean, they, they speak for themselves. We get a yes and stuff like that. But there was one. I was, was thinking it was upstairs. I thought it was a growl. He goes, well, no, I think it's downstairs. It sounded like you this. You record yeah. And you hear and I go, that was a chair somebody sign. getting up off the chair. To, but because they took into account where the recorder was, which happened to be in yep. the basement. And but I was listening to upstairs time, and downstairs. I got them confused. The time was, was it was right below the kitchen where we had everything set up. And yeah. I know I remember going like this right around that time. Yeah. So it just it goes to say, you know, that you want to have all your equipment and research and make sure you know where everyone is. So that way you're not bringing some, nothing to someone, you know, and telling them it's something. 
But yeah, that to me sounds like um, a windbreaker. But we tell you it's toys. Just need to make it a little louder so, I, so we can hear you. And you hear toys. Now, now I'm telling you it's a windbreaker. Listen. There is, there is, and I, but, the, but he, and he supports that. I, I fully acknowledge that it's an EVP now. When I initially heard it, I was like, was there someone wearing a windbreaker? Because we got to rule that out. Somebody, somebody, 